This is an Insta360 One Art tutorial for beginners. And even if you've never shot with a 360 camera before, by the end of this video, you'll know how to use the Insta360 One R. So I'm sure you've seen demo videos of the Insta360 One R. It looks really cool, but at the same time, it looks a little intimidating. I mean, if you've hung around um, forums for 360 cameras, and you've seen the posts that, that people make, they mention things like reframing and uh, horizon and stitching and unfamiliar words and it seems like it's really technical but don't worry it's a lot easier than it looks so in this video I'm gonna assume zero knowledge I'm gonna take you step by step through using the Insta360 One R you'll learn number one why should you shoot in 360 I mean, what's the advantage compared to shooting with your smartphone or with an action camera Two, I'm going to show you a quick start guide for the Insta360 One R. In about two minutes, you'll learn everything from shooting all the way to sharing your photos and videos. This is the absolute fastest way to get started on the Insta360 One R. Next, I'm going to show you essential shooting techniques for shooting in 360. These are basic techniques that all 360 shooters must know. Now that's a lot to cover, so I'm going to include time codes that I'm going to put in the description. And in addition, I'm going to put in this section of the screen a little chapter title so you know where you are in this video. You're watching 360 Rumors, my name is Nick, and you're going to learn a lot in this video. So let's start with why should you shoot in 360? What's the benefit compared to shooting with your smartphone or with a regular action cam? Well, the first benefit is super stabilization. And I know your action cam can have pretty good stabilization, but you haven't seen stabilization like this. Second, you can capture an amazing third person view. Your videos will look like they were shot by an invisible flying camera or a camera crew with thousands of dollars of camera equipment. And you can do all that with a camera that fits in your pocket. Third, you can shoot without aiming. That's huge because that means that when you're shooting with the Insta360 1R, you can focus on having fun with your family and friends. You don't have to think about how to shoot the video or what kind of angle you want to take. Just shoot first and point later. So these advantages are really cool. But you may be wondering, is it hard to use a 360 camera? It just seems so different from all the other cameras you've had. Don't worry, it's a lot easier than it looks. And in the next couple minutes, you're gonna learn how to shoot with a 360 camera and share your video with your family and friends. So let's take a look at the Insta360 1R. Now the 1R is a modular 360 camera. That means it has different parts that you can reconfigure depending on what's your purpose. There are several mods such as the 4K mod, which is like an action cam, the one inch mod, which has a one inch sensor, and the Aerial Edition, which is a 360 camera for a Mavic Pro. So in this case, I'm using the 360 mod, which is used for taking 360 photos and videos so here's the power button and here's the shutter. And this one is a touch screen. Over here you have a door for the uh, USB type C port and the micro SD card slot. So you see how the, there's like a yellow bar over there? That means that it's not completely closed. So you want to push it in and make sure that it's totally closed. So the first time you use the Insta360 1R, you should calibrate the the gyro so go to the settings by swiping down from the main screen go to the next page tap on this gear icon and tap on general and scroll down and look for gyro calibration now set the camera down like this and then slide this uh, uh, button here and wait for it to calibrate if you've never shot with a 360 camera before, don't worry, it's not as complicated as it looks. So I'm just gonna turn it on by holding down the power button and you're gonna see the touch screen turn on. Now to change modes, you simply swipe up and you can change from photo to video to time-lapse. If this is your first time to shoot with a 360 camera, it's okay to shoot with it like a normal camera. 
So now I'm going to start recording by pressing the shutter button. And that beep tells me that it started recording. So I can aim it, let's say, at this tree and pan it slowly up to the top of the tree or aim it toward the lamp post and pan it up to the top of the lamp post. Then to stop recording, I just press the shutter button again. Now you've recorded your first 360 video. Let's learn how to share it. To do that, we're going to need the Inset 361R app. So I've already downloaded the app. Now I'm going to connect the app to my camera. So I'm going to turn on the camera. Then over here, I'm going to tap on album. So then I'm going to tap on this icon over here to connect to the camera. So I found my camera, I'm going to select my camera. And then it's going to prompt me to connect to the Wi-Fi. So go to, go to settings, turn on the Wi-Fi, and then I'm going to look for the camera's Wi-Fi network. So it's over here, it's already connected. Uh, once it's connected, then you can go back to the app. So now we're in the app and it's going to load all the videos that we shot on the camera. So let's say we want to share this video. I'm going to tap on it and then it's going to load the video and preview it for you. If you want to pause the video, tap on the screen. On the upper right corner, you'll notice three dots. So I'm going to tap on that and then it's going to bring up a bunch of other um, options. Now, if we were pointing with the 1R the way we point with a regular camera, then we want to make sure that direction lock is turned on. And we also want to make sure that stabilization is turned on. So as when direction lock is turned on, then you'll notice that the video will aim wherever the camera is pointed. So here we pointed at the uh, lamp post. Before we share it, we can choose the aspect ratio. For example, we can make it 16 by 9 or we can make it square. Um, whichever format you prefer. So let's say we want to share it to 16 by 9. To share it, you tap on this icon over here and then choose, it's going to ask you to if you want to share it as a flat video or as a 360 video. So let's say we're going to choose that one and it's going to start exporting it. So notice that we never had to download the video. All we had to do is share it. Now you'll see an option called Color Plus and what that does is um, it adds kind of like an HDR effect and when you do that it's going to re-render the video and add the HDR effect. So once it's done we can it's already been saved to album and you can choose to share it to any of these social media services. Now when you were looking at your video you may have noticed that your hands look huge. How do you avoid that? Well it's easy you just need two things. One, you need a selfie stick like this. And second, you'll need to use this self timer. Here's how to use them. This time, let's take a photo. So if your camera went to sleep, just press the power button to turn it back on. And let's switch to photo mode. I'm gonna switch to the swipe up and then let's go to the photo icon and tap on it. And now we're in photo mode. So to activate the self timer, tap on this bottom right corner now you can choose the timer from 3 seconds to 5 seconds to as long as 15 seconds. So let's just do choose 5 seconds. Tap on the check mark to go back to the main screen. Let's take a photo of this tree right here. So I'm just going to press the shutter button and you notice that it's going to count down. It's going to hold it like that. And that's it. We've taken our first 360 photo. Now, did you notice something else? The selfie stick disappeared. How did that happen? That's because a 360 camera sees everything except whatever's in the stitch line. So the space between the lenses is the stitch line. And that's kind of like a blind spot for the 360 camera. So anything that's in that blind spot will look invisible, including a selfie stick. So when you're shooting with a selfie stick, make sure not to bend the camera like this. Because when you do that, the selfie stick is going to show up in the video. Instead, keep the camera in line with the selfie stick. And that way, 
the selfie stick will be within the stitch line and will become invisible. And that's how you get the invisible flying camera effect or the third person view effect. Because the stitch line is a blind spot for the 360 camera, you want to make sure to avoid pointing the stitch line at your subject or anything important. Here's why. Watch as the stitch line points at my face. Doesn't look too good, does it? So that's why you should aim the stitch line away from your subject or anything important. Now here's a tip for avoiding the stitch line. Imagine that there's a giant fan along the stitch line. And if that giant fan is hitting you or your subject, then you're in the stitch line and you need to point it away from them. Now, here's how to get the best third person view effect. When you're shooting your video or photo, you can point the camera any way you want. And you don't have to hold it up like this. Instead, just hold it at an angle, at like a natural angle, and just point wherever you want or move wherever you want to go. Uh, because the 1R has excellent stabilization and because you're recording it in 360, then everything will remain level no matter which way you point your camera. A common issue for beginners is uneven exposure. For example, the top part of this video looks a little bit brighter than the lower part. It's most noticeable along my dark pants. What you're actually seeing is glare. Now here are three tips to minimize glare. Number one, keep the lens very clean. Wipe it very carefully before using it. Two, avoid scratching the lens. Never ever lay your camera down on a hard surface. Three, aim the stitch line toward the brightest light source. To help you do that, look at the shadow of your camera. If you can see the shadow of both lenses at the same time, then the stitch line is probably pointed at the brightest light source. Now I bet you have some questions, so don't worry, just leave them in the comments. I do my best to answer all questions. Now one of the most common questions that people ask about 360 cameras is, why isn't it as detailed as my 4K phone? Well, I'll show you why. In here I've got the Insta360 ONE R 360 mod and the 360 ONE R 4K mod side by side. Let's take a video and see what it looks like. I'm gonna take a video of a shed over there. When we put the 4K and the 360 mod side by side at the same viewing size, we can see that the 4K mod is clearly far more detailed, even though its resolution is only 4K and the 360 mod's resolution is 5.7K. That's because the 5.7K resolution of the 360 mod is spread out over 360 degrees, whereas with the 4K mod, the 4K resolution is spread out over around 150 degrees. So the 4K mod has more pixels per degree, and that's why it's much more detailed than the 360 mod. When using slow motion, the 4K mod has an advantage as well. Not only is it more detailed, but you also get a higher frame rate for smoother slow motion. On the other hand, with the 360 mod, there are ways to simulate a slower speed. The 360 mod also has a much wider view that can capture some details that the 4K mod would miss. And as we learned in the first part of this video, the 360 mod has many unique advantages. So which is better? Well, the good thing is with the Insta360 ONE R, you don't have to choose. You can get the best of both worlds. If you want slow motion or if you want more detail, choose the 4K mod. And if you want a third person view or amazing camera angles, you can use the 360 mod.
So congratulations, you now know the basics of shooting with 360 cameras. In the next part of this video, I'm going to show you how to edit your 360 photos and videos. And again, I'm going to make it as easy as possible for you. Thanks very much. I'll see you in 360.